the Prado has this responsibility of, of looking after Goya's work from beginning to end. So it's the place to go to if you want to understand Goya. With the portraits, I, was, I had to be very careful not to over-ask. Also aware that some pictures just do not leave the Prado, such as the large painting of the family of Charles IV, which is like Las Meninas by Velázquez. It's one of those sacred paintings that you have to go to the Prado to see. It just won't move. It was a royal commission in 1800 that was related to France because there was a new ambassador of France, new relations with Napoleon, um, who actually wanted to marry the young one there. And in our opinion, this painting was a very political painting to be established in the royal palace in order to be seen by the ambassadors, by everybody who came to, to, to visit the king. The establishment of the Bourbons as a monarchy of Spain, legal monarchy of Spain, which is established not only by Hercules, but also by the similarity of this painting with Las Meninas of Velázquez, which is also a political painting that establishes the crown and the power of the king through the little infanta. So here is almost the same idea with Velázquez painting and Goya painting. So visually, in the court, that was the same thing. I've written once that um, he's probably one of the very few portrait painters that when he looks at a person in front of him and has to make a portrait of him, he doesn't see the clothes. He sees them naked, completely naked. Uh, you see that there is no frontier between the dress, whatever the dress is, and the person. And it's very difficult to get that in any other artist, even Rembrandt. You see the person, the face, the hands, and then the clothes. But it's difficult to imagine how that person was, not with Goya. In every portrait, in everyone, you see the naked fellow. I suppose that when Goya is asked to paint a portrait, whether it's of a minister of state or the king or simply a close friend, one of his great advantages, I think, was that he could see people in the round. He could see and understand and sympathize with their character. But he really, I think, had an extraordinary grasp, a psychological grasp of personality. And he was also incredibly attentive to body language.